first heard about the collapse of Highway 40 near Weber Falls, Oklahoma, from 5 News this morning, we brought you the story only minutes after a barge collided with the bridge, sending three sections of the highway tumbling some 60 feet below to water. Now our coverage continues as salvage and repair operations get underway. Thanks for joining us this evening, everyone, here at 5 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Lydia Joseph. More on that collision. Now, for a large part of the afternoon, recovery workers have not been able to do their jobs at the accident scene. There have been concerns about the stability of that collapsed bridge. Recovery workers have kept clear in case those damaged sections were to fall, but now the broken bridge has been reinforced and recovery efforts are underway. Five News reporter Sean Boland has the latest on those efforts. He joins us now live from the scene. Sean, what do you know? Uh, we're at the uh, Web, Web Falls uh, search area. We're actually, we are just about, about a half a mile or so from where the bit bridge fell into the water. Now, so far, search and rescue teams have been turned. They have uh, stopped searching for the night. They will resume in the morning when there is light. I can tell you so far that they've recovered three victims, um, and they also have record, recovered some horses uh, that were stuck in a horse trailer. Um, they recovered uh, several cars that they'd actually pulled out of the river, as well as two semi-trucks. Uh, now, the bodies were taken to the Tulsa Medical Examiner's Office. Well, they will be examined, and so hopefully they can get some IDs for the families involved in this. Um, the latest is that the National Transportation Safety Board has taken over the investigation. They will be, of course, looking into causes of the crash, why the barge actually hit the bridge. Um, there's been some speculation that there was a lot of bad weather that may have caused um, the crash. Um, now the Coast Guard has also been involved in the rescue efforts. Um, they've had dive teams down looking for bodies uh, and they had this to say about the search and rescue effort. We're still out there and there's still hope and uh, we're going to continue to search for these people uh, as long as we can until we find them or until the, the we get orders to, to uh, stand down. I've helped with dragging operation and drowning recoveries, but nothing like this. It's, it's pretty, pretty sad for the family that lost their loved one. Pulling the cars and stuff out with the crane, set them over onto the work barge, we're doing the extrication and the uh, identifying the bodies and stuff over there on, the, on that work barge. Salvage and recovery efforts have been slow going so far because of strong currents and poor visibility. Now we understand uh, at one point emergency crews brought in the jaws of life to actually cut victims out of their car. That's a sort of saw that's used to cut through the metal of cars and mangled cars so that they can pull out victims. Now we've heard plenty of speculation about the crash um, as far as, as, the, as the barge hitting the, the actual bridge. Um, we think maybe it's been could have been bad weather that caused a lot of this, and that's something that the NTSB will look will be looking at. And we'd also heard that uh, the barge had hit the overpass on, of Highway 64 on its way down to the I-40 bridge, but apparently it did not do very much damage because the uh, bridge was left open for the day. There was no structural damage. Uh, now one. So we're here at the scene, the salvage crews will be going back until, will not be coming back until daybreak, and uh, it is just too dangerous at right now for them to be searching because of the bad weather. Now, one thing that they did release is the name of the barge captain who was involved in this wreck. He was the person who was actually driving the barge. Um, his name is Florence, excuse me, his name is Joe Devman, and he is from Florence, Mississippi, and apparently he has 30 years experience. So it is very unclear why this possibly could have happened. Reporting live in Web Falls, I'm Sean Boland, 5 News. That is some dramatic video. Thank you, Sean. Well, the recovery and search has been called off, as Sean said, for the night. But those workers who search and recover wouldn't be able to do their jobs without years of hard work and training. 5 News reporter Ben McClintock joins us now in the studio with more on the men and women who went into the dangerous situation to save other people's lives today. Good evening, Ben. Good evening, Lydia. Well, once again, we saw firefighters and police officers putting themselves in harm's way to protect others. But even now, the recovery effort is limited because this accident site is still very dangerous. Even now, they've done some securing of the bridge. Dana Tracy is the fire chief for Rural District 1 in Oklahoma. He and his crew were some of the first to work on stabilizing the bridge, and they had a lot of help. 
Two floating cranes had to be brought in to support the bridge along with several boats to tie down the barges, but all those resources wouldn't do any good if they weren't organized properly. I went with a team to secure the barge to the bridge. That was a big concern, a big safety concern. So we just went and said, hey, we're going to do it right. Everybody, nobody stepped on anybody. It was a beautiful incident in command. That's when all these people come together. Somebody's got to be the boss. You respect that. You go out there and you do a professional job. But sometimes it's next to impossible to do a professional job when you know people are dead or even dying. Supervisors decided early on that it was too dangerous for driver, divers to res and rescue workers to go into the water until that what was left of the bridge was stabilized. That meant workers had to stand by and wait for several hours before they could wait and start recovering the submerged cars. It's a somber mood down there. It's, it's, uh, they brought up, uh, first thing they brought up was like a little Astro Man kind of deal. And there was a, a fatality in it. And uh, they had to cut it out with the jaws of life. But these men and women don't shy away from the upsetting work of pulling cars and bodies out of the water. Some of Tracy's crew were on vacation for the holiday, and even they went down to the wreckage site to see what they could do. Uh, one of my captains saw in Oklahoma City and came. You know, this is a holiday. i got to be there. Yeah. So everybody pitched in. I can't say enough uh, about the Highway Patrol, the Sheriff's Departments, Muskogee County Sheriff. Uh, everybody was in coordination. It, it speaks real well for the people in this area. And that coordination will have to carry on for many days to come. There's still a lot of debris in the water, and recovery workers are still pulling cars out of the water tonight. or were earlier, but they have now called off their searches at this time. But they'll keep on working until the job is done. Reporting live, Ben McClintock, 5 News. Lydia? Thank you, Ben. I know you have been at the scene most of the day since very early this morning. Thank you so much for that hard work. Well, there are some happy endings to report to you on this day of tragedy. Four people whose cars went over the brink of what that broken bridge and lived to tell about the tale. Five News reporter Jenny Hamill visited with some of those survivors, and she joins us now live with their stories. Good evening, Jenny. Well, Lydia, it's estimated, well, Lydia, this morning when uh, 600 feet of the I-40 bridge collapsed, it's estimated that about seven to nine vehicles plummeted 60 feet into the rushing waters of the Arkansas River. Of those vehicles, there were five that were lucky enough to escape the incident with their lives. One was admitted to a hospital in Salisa and four others were admitted to the Muskogee Regional Medical Center. Of those four, one truck driver, James Billu, a 62-year-old truck driver out of Conway, Arkansas, suffered severe head injuries when his semi rolled off the rolled off the bridge and into the waters. His niece was at the medical center today and she told us a little bit about James Billu's harrowing experience. Well, he said he was at the very top. There was no time for him to break. He said he could, didn't even have time to stop. He just went straight down. Actually, as he was coming up, he got caught underneath the barge and so he had to, you know, fight to get around that. And actually, a fisherman that was there is the one that saved his life. Like he threw him a life jacket and then they pulled him out. Oh, we owe him everything. He saved his life. The others admitted were a couple in their 60s, Max and Goldie Alley, who plummeted in their car into the Arkansas River. Goldie was released with superficial wounds, but her husband was in critical condition with a broken back and two broken vertebrae. Now, one other truck driver fell into the river. That was 37-year-old Rodney Tidwell, who at about 7 p.m. today was due to be released in fair condition. So, of those that plummeted into the river, there were five that were lucky enough to escape this harrowing situation with their lives. Now, there was one other person who was admitted, admitted into the Muskogee Regional Medical Center, and that was actually the pilot of the tugboat that was towing the two barges that crashed into the bridge. Now, a spokesperson for Magnolia Marine, which owns the tugboat and the barges, said in a press conference earlier tonight that the pilot probably blacked out or um, blacked out, and uh, that was the reason why the barges crash into the bridge. So investigations of that will begin tomorrow as soon as daylight picks up. Reporting live for 5 News, I'm Jenny Hamill. Thank you so much, Jenny. Well, Garrett Lewis was also out this morning about doing some reports for us. He was also in the weather in the Live Max 5 Doppler Storm Center tracking the weather. Garrett, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? I think we stand a chance for some more showers and thunderstorms throughout the morning hours, then yet again some stronger storms 
throughout the evening hours. Let's look at Max though, and I'll show you what's going on now and a lack thereof of storms. As you can see, clear skies across Max right now, a little bit of a blurb towards Fayetteville, but I don't think any rain actually occurring right now. We're gonna look for another complex of storms to develop and roll through Southeast Oklahoma and pretty much die out before it reaches into Southwest Arkansas. As we take a look at temperatures across the area, we put them into the upper 60s and lower 70s across Northwest Arkansas. 72 in Salisaw, 69 in Fayetteville, 70 in Rogers, 66 in Clarksville, 72 in Fort Smith. But don't let the rain-free skies on max fool you. As we take a look at the regional radar, you can see a line of storms marching eastward. I think, though, that these will start to weaken just a touch before they actually make their way into our area. We are not under a slight risk, and if we do see any severe weather, it will not be organized and will be scattered. Large hail will be the primary threat, much like we saw earlier today across Crawford County. As we take a look at parts of the, the live Max 5 Doppler radar, I want to zoom into the area again and give you an update on the road condition that's going on across the area. Now, I'm going to take a look at some of the alternate routes if you were planning on using the I-40 bridge in your travels. Now, of course, keep in mind throughout the next couple of months, and, and there's no telling how long this is going to take to fix this, we are, all, we are all going to be seeing significant road delays, and as we move Max down to the south just a little bit, I'm showing you State Highway 9 and State Highway 2. This is the road I'm suggesting that you take. The reason being is that this completely bypasses all of the traffic and all the activities that are north of the area. I'm going to highlight just a little bit for you and show you that if you're making your way, you want to go down, first down 59, which is just off to the right, and then travel down um, parts of Highway 9. Let's pop up the ESS for if we can and take a look at that and show you what we're talking about here as we um, go to that graphic for you. i got a graphical display of showing you what's going on across the area. If we go to that in just a second, you'll travel up Highway 2 this way, and that's actually the best way to travel to make your way around Interstate 40. So, Lydia, the travel concerns will be going on over the next couple of months. There it is for you. That's exactly what I was drawing on Max. It's just a little bit, a little bit more widespread. It gives you an idea of what we want you to do. If you can actually travel to the Salisaw area, go down 59, catch Highway 9, travel westbound, go north on Highway 2. And Lydia, I traveled that several times today, and it wasn't that bad. Okay. I mean, traffic speed limits were about. 45 to 50 miles per hour the whole way, sometimes 65 miles per hour, but I think the general rule is 50. And if you're doing any travel, please don't speed. There's a lot of people out on the roadways. Of course, thousands of people cross that bridge every day, and those roadways are going to be jam-packed throughout the next couple of months until we get this bridge fixed. So Lydia will continue to bring you updates on the traffic and on the weather. We'll have your complete forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Garrett. Well, Oklahoma Governor Frank Keating called this day a very sad one, and he spoke to Five News after surveying the damage on I-40. The Republican governor also said the loss of life is especially troubling this Memorial Day because those involved were in many cases families traveling through Oklahoma from all across the country. Memorial Day weekend is traditionally marred by a high number of deaths due to auto accidents, higher even than most other widely traveled holiday weekends. Well, governor right. Keating said he realizes that the damage to our 40 will be a hassle to many drivers. Road, and it is going to cause a lot of inconvenience but with the congressman's help and others, we'll try to get it up as quickly as can be. But it's certainly a, you know, a major thoroughfare across the United States, and to have it disrupted uh, is not good news for commerce. Authorities also say that construction on the bridge could take anywhere from six months to two years to finally be completed. Now, as Five News has been telling you throughout the day, dive teams are still hard at work throughout southeast Oklahoma tonight. It's been called off the search actually for bodies following the I-40 bridge collapse. It happened when a barge rammed into the bridge's support columns. CBS correspondent Jim Acosta is in Oklahoma with the latest. The search for victims is never easy, but where Interstate 40 once crossed the Arkansas River, it's a balancing act, literally. The barge that rammed into this bridge, causing it to collapse, is now holding it up so recovery teams can look for bodies. This car and its deceased passenger were the first to be pulled out of the river. Searchers know this is just the beginning. Pretty tough. You know, the people in those cars and their families, and it's hard to lose them. Witnesses say the barge collided with the bridge's support pillars, and a chunk of the highway above gave way, plunging at least a dozen vehicles 75 feet into the water. We could see, still see dust and all from that. And I saw two cars go off into the water. Uh, I, they uh, said there's a lot more than that, but it was horrible. Fishermen and nearby residents managed to rescue four people. One of the survivors, a trucker. He said he was following the truck. 
and it just disappeared in front of him and that he tried to stop and, and he couldn't get stopped. Several government teams are investigating the crash, and so far it appears the captain of the barge may have blacked out. Our hearts and prayers go out to the families that have been affected by this uh, a catastrophe to us. And on this Memorial Day weekend, the 20,000 vehicles that use this bridge will now have to find alternate routes. It will take millions of dollars and six months to rebuild what is now gone. Jim Acosta, CBS News, Weber's Falls, Oklahoma. Tragedy. Well, up next, forecaster Garrett Lewis will join us live from the Max 5 Doppler Storm Center with your Memorial Day forecast. And a little later on, we'll hear from some more eyewitness accounts of the bridge collapse fall, fall near Weber Falls. You're watching 5 News at 10 with Lydia Joseph. Sports with Brett Heddle. Max 5 Doppler weather with Garrett Lewis. This is 5 News at 10. Now, live Max 5 Doppler weather. Many of you still have traveling plans across Arkansas and Oklahoma. Memorial Day, big holiday coming up tomorrow. Right now, live Max 5 Doppler radar set up on its 300 mile maximum distance across the skies. Not picking up any returns to the west of Oklahoma City just yet, but they will be moving in and then gradually dissipating. Slight chance some of them could move into northeast Oklahoma. Just a real slight chance now. We'll keep watching it throughout the overnight hours, bringing you any updates. No widespread severe weather expected, but one of these roamers could go severe like we found out early this morning with the complex that moved through southeast Oklahoma. We'll have another complex tonight as a low-level jet stream or a river of warm air rises from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's when we see those elevated showers and thunderstorms with possibly nickel-sized hail in them. Let's take a look at your weather net sites across our area. Sunnyvale Elementary School in Fort Smith, currently 68 degrees. Your high today was uh, 69, looking at an east wind now at about 4 miles per hour. As we take a look at that, we actually had 15 one hundredths of an inch of precipitation fall in the Fort Smith area with those showers that moved through. Let's look at some high temperatures now elsewhere across our area. 68 for Fayetteville, 66 in Rogers, 75 Poto, and 83 warm degrees in the Clarksville area. And as we take a look at your currents, currently into the upper 60s, 69 Fayetteville, 70 Rogers, 66 for Clarksville, 72 Fort Smith. So it's a relatively comfortable evening outside. Temperatures are pretty nice and they will continue to be nice over the next couple of days but we have a big rainmaker in the forecast in fact some soaking rain in the next couple of days right now regional radar here's the line of showers i was telling you marching towards the east and it's really kind of ill defined i mean there's not a whole lot of action with it what you see is what you get and this is more of a stable air mass so once this line starts to gradually creep towards the east it's going to dissipate but nevertheless we do stand the chance of seeing showers few thunderstorms tonight. Keep it here. We'll be the first to tell you, as always, if any showers and thunderstorms do turn severe. As far as the clouds are concerned, there's that complex that started this morning, and then there's those clear skies that we enjoyed. Wasn't it nice outside? Beautiful sunny skies. Warmed up nice as well. We look off to the west, though, and there's that those showers and thunderstorms and the overspread of clouds moving in. So it looks like Memorial Day promises to bring cloudy skies. We expect another complex to form tonight mainly over southeast Oklahoma and southwest Arkansas. Again, don't think widespread severe weather, but an isolated severe weather event or isolated storm or two is possible. That will move through throughout the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. And then by your Tuesday, this low pressure parks itself in Oklahoma. It's got lots of moisture to throw around in the air. We're going to see a pretty big rain event setting up. The um, upper level dynamics that actually guide this low are not there. So the low is just going to sit there over Arkansas and Oklahoma and spin, and it's going to pump up Gulf moisture. Could be looking at a flash flooding event come Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll keep you posted on that. Your county cast for northwest Arkansas puts overnight lows into the upper 50s, high temperatures tomorrow into the upper 70s, and once again, a 40% chance of storms late tonight. That's with that line that I showed you earlier. By tomorrow, you can expect some scattered showers across the area, high temperatures in the River Valley, lower 80s for Van Buren and Fort Smith, and once again, a slight chance of showers tonight with that line making its way east. Scattered morning and afternoon showers for tomorrow across parts of the Washita's as high temperatures afloat with the 80 degree mark, 81 Mena, 79 for the, the Waldron area, 80 for Danville. And as we look at your seven day forecast for Northwest Arkansas, Memorial Day for the most part, with the exception of those morning showers, looking dry but cloudy, and then some possible strong storms moving through Monday night. Tuesday and Wednesday just look downright sloppy if you can't avoid it. Maybe make your holiday a five-day weekend instead of a three-day weekend. But many of you are going back to work tomorrow. 
So you can sleep in tomorrow, sleep through the storms that are rolling through, maybe get something, get something done tomorrow afternoon because you're not going to be able to get it done Tuesday, Wednesday. The wet weather finally moves out by Thursday, though, and promising to bring Friday, Saturday, and Sunday a little bit of drier and warmer weather. And Lydia, we are moderating. Look at the temperatures back into the 80s. Before long, we'll actually see temperatures get into the 90s. The sun angle, guys, is as high now as it is in late July, so make sure you wear that sunscreen if you do have any outdoor activities planned come next weekend. Lydia? Thank you so much, Garrett. When we return, we'll talk to some of those who say they saw today's tragedy unfold. Plus, we'll introduce you to a man who says he knows for a fact that a second barge damaged the U.S. Highway 64 bridge just north of I-40. He says it was hit earlier in the morning by a separate barge. How does he know? Because he says he saw it all happen. Stay tuned for his story when we return. Live News at 10 is sponsored by... Bynum's Furniture Row of Springdale, and by Hanky Brothers Siding and Windows. This is 5 News. 400-foot section of the I Interstate 40 bridge near Vian has collapsed in the water. It was a little white car, but the first one went off, and they just kept hauling up after that. Five folks, they are calling rescued from this. A 60-foot drop into the rushing waters of the Arkansas River. At least one body from the water. The state of Oklahoma has declared a state of emergency. Loss of life is something that is uh, unbearable for all of us. This is 5 News. 400-foot section of the I Interstate 40 bridge near Vianne has collapsed in the water. It was a little white car, but the first one went off, and they just kept hauling up after that. Five folks, they are calling rescued from this. A 60-foot drop into the rushing waters of the Arkansas River. At least one body from the water. The state of Oklahoma has declared a state of emergency. Loss of life is something that is uh, unbearable for all of us. Thanks for staying with your 5 News tonight, everyone. Well, more than 150 bass fishing teams were camped out along the Arkansas River this morning, and many of the men and women in the tournament were eyewitnesses to the day's tragedy that may have claimed several lives. Now, I had the opportunity to speak with some of them, and here's their account of what happened. Having his morning cup of coffee, Donald Gaither heard the crash that sent several motorists to a watery grave. Gaither says seeing people flux from the water looks like a battle scene. Just like years in a war zone, I guess, because there's blood all over. While standing on private property, our cameras observed what appeared to be a body being pulled from the water and placed in the disaster recovery vehicle. Since the accident, traffic is being diverted over the Highway 64 bridge. Earlier reports from the area indicated that this bridge was struck also. OHP officials denied that claim, but other fishermen say around 1 in the morning they saw a different barge strike the Highway 64 bridge. Well, I was down there fishing about uh, 1 o'clock this morning, and uh, seen the board coming around the horn there. And he got hung up on the sandbar, and it took him a while to get around the horn. So I just went ahead and just sat there and watched him. And all of a sudden, I just heard a boom, and he hit the bridge over there. Barharn is sure that this crash was not the same barge that slammed into the I-40 bridge. Different barge than what knocked the one down on I-40. Barnhart says debris from the crash fell from the bridge onto the barge, and he worries that this alternate route may be another accident just waiting to happen. Now, we did speak with other witnesses who didn't want to go on camera with us. They say they, too, heard and saw the barge strike the 64 bridge earlier this morning, and debris fell from that bridge. We were unable to confirm it uh, at uh, when we went on the air. However, since we've been on the air, Oklahoma Highway Patrol did confirm that that barge hit it, but the structure is still safe. We will continue to bring you the latest information on this story when it becomes available. Well, earlier on 5 News at 5, we introduced you to Dwayne Copeland. Now, he was an eyewitness guest to the bridge collapse with us earlier in our newscast. He and his father were fishing on the Arkansas River about 100 yards away from the ill-fated barge when it collided with the bridge. This is how he described it. What we saw was uh, the barge headed up toward the bridge. Uh, the bridge has two pillars for the barges 
is supposed to pass. We knew he wasn't going to make it. We started slowing down. We saw the right-hand front corner of the barge hit the bridge embankment or pillar, and uh, we saw the bridge collapse. There was no cars on the bridge when it collapsed, but uh, approximately 15 seconds after it fell, cars started coming off the bridge. After the accident, Dwayne and his family ran and helped out with the rescue efforts. But when we return, forecaster Garrett Lewis will be in the Live Max 5 Doppler Storm Center with a look at your weather. Plus, we'll introduce you to another form of rescue aid. Don't turn on now. We'll be right back. If you do plan on taking your boat out on the lake tomorrow, here's a look at that lake forecast for you. Just about every lake is at or above average, with the exception of Beaver Lake, still way above average, over eight feet above average. But that's not stopping a lot of boaters from getting out there. And if you do go out there, remember to keep the basic rules in mind. Wear that life jacket. Don't drink out on the boat. And go a little extra slow when you're making your way to that destination to make sure you get there safely. Could see a few showers roaming about. It's in response to that line you're seeing off to the west. That'll be moving through through the morning. So tomorrow morning, expect scattered showers and thunderstorms. About a 30 to 40 percent chance. And then more wet weather rolls in by tomorrow evening. And fortunately, Lydia, it looks like this next round of storms is going to hang with us for a while. Not as much a severe weather threat as it's going to be a flash flooding event over Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we finally get rid of the showers and thunderstorms for your Thursday and Friday. So it looks like we have some rain in the forecast, Lydia. We'll track it for you and bring you precipitation and updates throughout the week. Okay, may hamper the cookout mm -hmm. tomorrow. That's right. Thank you, Garrett. Well, rescue workers have been on the job nonstop since the I-40 bridge collapsed just before 8 this morning. But they're getting help themselves. Now, the Salvation Army was there to lend a helping hand. After this crew received the call, they loaded up their mobile trucks with foods, drinks, and other supplies they could get their hands on. Their purpose, to keep rescue workers replenished and energized. And this crew will be patrolling the area around R-40 Bridge throughout the night. But that's not the only crew that will be out. There's, um, there should be at least two or three other uh, units that are here as well. There's also a permanent Salvation Army station set up at the Media Center at the Love's Truck Stop just west of the collapsed bridge. Well, stay with us. We'll have a final word when we return. Thank you for tuning in to your 5 News at 10 tonight. Now, be sure and wake up with 5 News this morning, tomorrow morning, where we'll have the latest developments from this morning's accident. Everyone is asking that you keep the victims of this tragedy in your thoughts and prayers tonight. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll see you in the morning, bright and early. Bye-bye. People turn to 5 News for local news than any other source. This is your 5 News station.